3.1, the derivative and tangent line problem. Today we're going to start talking about how the limit is useful, how we can apply it to derivatives, which is one of the main concepts in calculus. So let's look at this first example here. The derivative allows you to find the slope of a curved line at a particular point up until this class, up until this lesson, unless you've taken a calculus class in the past, you were only able to find the slope of linear functions, right? Uh, where the slope formula was rise over run, or y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1, okay? Today what we're going to do, we're going to look first of all at tangent lines. So tangent lines intersect a function at one particular point. So for instance, if I pick this point here, I can draw a tangent line like that. So this linear function intersects this parabola right here at that point. So if we could find the slope of this line, we would know the slope of this function at that particular point, whatever this value is. We'll call it c sub 1. Okay, And I think you can see here, I could draw tangent lines all over this graph. Right? Also, I think you can see, depending on which x value I pick, right, let's say this is c sub 2, the slope of the function is going to change depending on which x value I pick. Because all of these tangent lines that I've drawn here have different slopes. Okay, let's look at this other function. So here, Sometimes the tangent line will intersect the function, but it's still, it just intersects it at one point. So, we were trying to find the slope at point C, whatever the slope of this linear function would be, that would be the slope of this curved function at that particular point C. Finally, you might have a case like this where you have a function like this and we're trying to find the slope of the function at point P and when you go to draw the tangent line, it only intersects it at one point here, but if you extend it, it intersects it there also. This would still be considered a tangent line because it intersects the function only at one point locally, where if it's extended, we don't really count or look at this part where it's intersecting there. So for this function f of x, when we look at some x point, let's say c, if we were able to find the slope of this tangent line, we would know the slope of this function at point c. Okay, so this is a little introduction. This is finding the slope of the tangent line, which is eventually going to be called a derivative. The derivative allows you to find the slope um, of any function at any particular point, as long with some restrictions. The point has to exist, or it can't be uh, slope undefined, meaning a vertical line. All right, so let's look at the tangent line to a curve at a point. Okay, so let's, let's look at what we have here. Okay, so we have some function here, this black line, which is going to be called f of x. Okay, and we're going to be trying to find the slope of this function at a particular point. We'll say at point C here. Okay. 
So first of all, if we had point C and point C plus delta X, okay, if we look at these two points, if I drew a line through these two points, this line here is known as a secant line. Okay, the definition of a secant line is a linear line, okay, so a, a linear function, which would be a line that cuts through a function at two particular points. Okay, so we could definitely find the slope of the secant line. So the slope of the secant line, we would use this slope formula here. Okay, in calculus, um, y sub 2, we're going to call that f of c plus delta x. Okay, so if this is c, right, this would be f of c. If this is c plus delta c, this would be f of c plus delta c. Okay, so how I'm getting this, c is just the measurement from here to there. Then it says the distance from c to c plus delta c is delta c. So you're adding c plus delta c to get c plus delta c. Alright, so y sub 2, we're calling that f of c plus delta c. Uh, y sub 1, this would be y sub 1, we're calling that f of c. This is y sub 2, all over c plus delta c, so this is x sub 2, and minus c, this would be x sub 1. So hopefully you see the notation of how we write the slope of the secant line. All right, and then we could simplify that a little bit. If you look at the denominator here, the positive c and the negative c, they could cancel out, so you just have delta x at the end. So this formula here, this is known as the slope of the secant line. So we could definitely find that slope there. Okay. Now, we want to find the slope of this line, which the slope of this line is known as the tangent line. Because if we can find the slope of the tangent line, then we can definitely find the slope of this function at that particular point C there. All right? So let me show you um, kind of a, a video um, demonstration so you can get a better feel of what we're going to be doing here. All right, so let's look at what we have here. So what's in black here? This is some function. Okay, it looks like maybe a cubic function, all right? And the red line, that's the secant line. It's intersecting at two points at A and B. And then we have the tangent line, okay? So look at the secant line. Look, look here, we've got delta x, okay? So that's the change in the x value, so the, the change from A to B, okay? And right now, the distance from A to B is 1.68, okay? And the change of y, okay, so this, this is kind of like the slope. This is 2.14. Notice what happens when I take um, point B, okay, and I move it this way, okay? Notice, notice right here what happens. Notice what happens to delta x. Delta x goes to 0. Okay? As delta x goes to 0, look what happens to the secant line. The secant line eventually becomes the tangent line. Okay? So what we're going to do in order to find the slope at this particular point A, we're going to take the slope of the secant line, and we're going to try to take delta x and allow that to approach zero. So this is where this idea of limits are going to come into play. 
All right, so let's go back to our example. So again, if we can, if we can have, if we can somehow make the slope of the secant line, okay, if we can make the secant line and turn it into the tangent line, the way that we're going to do this is we are going to allow delta x to go to zero. When delta x goes to zero, the secant line is going to become the tangent line, and then when we have the tangent line, we'll know the slope at that particular point C. So that's going to look like this. It's written here. We're going to take the slope, or we're going to take the limit of the secant line. Well, the secant line is this f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x. And we're going to take delta x, and we're going to want that to approach 0. When that happens, that is going to give us the slope of the tangent line. And in calculus, we usually use this notation here, this f prime of c, or f prime of x. So remember, c is just some x value. Okay, so we're going to use this uh, formula today, this limit, to find derivatives. And again, derivatives will give us the slope at any particular point of this um, function, specifically a function with some kind of a curve in it.